In our first scenario, we want to have different effect settings for each of the clips on a track. And to demonstrate that, I have a track here with two clips and a drum bus device. And for each of those clips, I want to have different drum bus settings. To accomplish that, we'd use automation envelopes. And let me just give you a quick example of how you do that normally. All right, so I'll launch this clip here, set transients where I want it, and then go into the clip and double click here to create an automation point. Go to the second clip, set transients where I want it, go into the clip, and again, double click to create an automation point. Now each one of these clips has different settings for that transients parameter. So that's useful, but it's a little bit slow. We can do that a little bit quicker in ClipX Pro, and I have some X clips here uh, to demonstrate that. Uh, the first action I'm going to show you is this envelope clear action, and that'll clear all the envelopes from a clip. All right. In this case, I'm applying it to all of the clips on the selected track, so those two envelopes I just created in each one of those clips is going to be cleared here. And to insert envelopes, I'm going to go here, and uh, we're going to use this envelope insert action. All right, and that can apply to whichever parameter you specify. In this case, I'm applying it to the selected parameter, and that is the last parameter that was clicked on with your mouse. And that's indicated by this border around the parameter. Now, one thing to note here is that the selected parameter is affected by your mouse. All right, so right now frequency is, is selected here, but if I go up here and launch this X clip with my mouse, frequency becomes deselected. All right, so when you're applying actions to the selected parameter, you don't want to use your mouse. Okay, uh, I would recommend using X controls, but failing that, you can also use X clips. You just have to launch them uh, without using your mouse. So using key mapping, MIDI mapping, or a control surface. In this case, I'm using key mapping. All right, so understanding that, let's take a look at how this envelope insert action works. I'll launch this clip, set transients where I want it, and then insert an envelope. Launch this clip, again, set transients where I want it, and insert an envelope. It's that simple. Now let's say I want to insert a shaped envelope. In ClipX Pro, we have a handful of shapes. I'm just going to show you a couple. The first is iRamp, and that's just an increasing ramp. All right, uh, so let's apply that to dry wet here. And let's see what that looks like. So you can see just an increasing envelope that starts at zero and goes to 100%, okay? In some cases though, you're not going to want to span the entire range of the parameter. All right, so I have an example of how you can do that uh, here. Uh, so first of all, we're using a different shape. This is a pyramid, so it'll be a three-point envelope. Its minimum value is going to be the current value, whatever that may be, and it's going to go up to 100% of the parameter value. All right, so let me launch this clip, and we'll again uh, apply this to dry wet. I'll set dry wet to 50% or so, 49%, and that'll be the minimum value, and 100 will be the maximum value. So now when you look at this now, we have this pyramid, starts at 49%, goes up to 100, and comes back down to 49%. All right, I'm going to clear all those envelopes and reset the device. And now I'm going to show you what's perhaps the most useful of all the envelope-related actions, and that's envelope capture. This can insert envelopes from multiple parameters at the same time. In this case, I'm specifying dev, which means the first device or selected device on a track, and that's drum bus in this case. So it's going to insert envelopes for all of drum bus's parameters. So let me show you how that works. We'll uh, increase drive, give it some crunch, turn down transients, and uh, capture that. Now I'll launch this clip, turn down the drive, turn on the compressor, turn up transients, give it some boom, higher frequency, and we will capture that. And now you can see each one of these clips has an entirely different state for that device. This is extremely useful because each clip on a track can have its own state for a device. So you don't need to worry about what state other clips are leaving the device in because each clip sets the exact state that it needs for that device. So extremely useful from a workflow perspective.